Hey guys, welcome back to another Math with Mac. Let me just pull this back a little bit. Um, dogs are here with me. It is actually Tuesday. It's very late at night. I was so sleepy today. I couldn't film, so I decided, you know what? I'm just going to film an introduction. And then um, when, on Thursday after the fall festival, I will record the rest of it. So I just want to do the intro first so you can guys can see Rocky and Max because tomorrow I'll probably just be super tired from the, oops, can you see Rocky right there? I'll probably be super tired from the fall festival and I'm just going to want to, you know, film it, get ready for bed. And, and in the morning on Friday, I'm leaving, Rocky's just staring at me. Um, on Friday, I'm going to leave really early in the morning to San Antonio because my cousin is getting married. So that's where I'm at right now while you're watching this. So if you're in my class in the morning, my first two periods, I am probably driving. And if you're watching this in the afternoon, I probably just got to my sister's house and we're gonna start getting dressed and we're gonna go to what we call a rehearsal dinner. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that, but a rehearsal dinner is when the people that are in the wedding get together and they practice what's gonna happen um, on the day of the actual wedding. Oh my gosh, look at my wet hair. I just got out of the shower. So. Uh, we practice what's going to happen at the actual wedding and then the next day is the wedding and that's when the big show big show is or whatever so I don't know if anybody's ever been in a wedding maybe a flower girl or a grooms uh, even a, a groomsman or the ring bearer or something like that but that's what I'm doing that's what my weekend is going to be filled with and I will try to um, record as much of that as I can so you guys can see how my weekend was and lots of fun with my family and everything like that so let me get, let me see if Rocky will get up. Can you get up, Rocky? Can you get up? Come here. Come here. Can you come here? He's just wagging his tail at me. Get up. Oh, here comes Max. Hey, Max. You want to say hi, Bobo Yeah? Come on. Say hi. Can you say hi? Say hi. Look. Oh, there's. Hey, guys. Back here. Um, I know I put a little intro in the beginning, but I just wanted to talk about how I just got back from the fall festival. And it was so much fun. Um, hopefully you didn't miss out on that. Some of you were there. I saw a bunch of you guys took a lot of pictures of y'all in the jail. And that was so much fun to see y'all trapped <laughs> in the jail. Because that's funny to me. To see y'all trapped in the jail. So funny to me. Anyway, I had a blast. Right now I'm super tired. I'm so tired <laughs> that I came home and I popped open a Coke. Because I am just that sleepy. I need that sugar rush to keep me awake because I have been awake since 5.30 in the morning. And it is almost 9 o'clock tonight already. And yeah, I'm just super tired. I ordered a pizza because I'm hungry. And my husband's not home yet because he also had some stuff to do at school too. So I know he's going to be hungry when he gets home also. So I'm just being a good wife right here. You know, my wife's shirt. Anyway, so I'm here with the dogs. I'll show you them real, real, real quick. Max is already cozy, cozy. He's ready for that sleep, sleep. Right, Max? All right. Give me this little side eye. And then Rockford right here, just getting his lazy bones on. And he just farted on me, so he's cool, I guess. Anyway, let's jump right into it. Um, oh, right here, that's like spider web that I put up because I had a Halloween party. And... Uh, yeah, it's just more decoration. Y'all know how I am. Anyway, it's got to come down. My husband said it has to come down this week. I'm going, like, mm, I guess. Anyway, I'm not here right now because, well, I told you before, I am at a wedding. Um, like I said, if you're watching this in the morning, um, probably driving. If you're watching this afternoon, then I am getting dressed and about to go to my cousin's house for the rehearsal dinner. Anyway, so you have a packet that looks like this. Um, on this first page, you have the adding and subtracting fractions. Um, so go ahead and put your name at the top there sorry that coke just made me burp gross anyway so then um directions explain why is it why is it important to find the lcm we know that lcm stands for least common multiple when adding or subtracting fractions then explain in detail how to solve two-thirds minus one-fifth and i gave you plenty of space to do that so i put the directions on there because so many kids um the last uh decimal times decimal essay were struggling with what to write and I just thought, you know what, Ms. Valdez, quit being silly. Put the directions on there so that there is no excuses about what it is that I want in your essay. And then at the bottom, I gave you space to work out the two-thirds minus, what was it, two-thirds minus one-fifth. I gave you the step, play, uh, space for the first, second, and then the third step. So I do need to see the work down there. Uh, don't do anything mentally if you can. But either way, don't do it on a separate, the, 
Don't do that work on a separate sheet. Do it down here. Also, I need a sloppy copy, and that sloppy copy needs to be checked by an adult. Okay? So, again, that is your first thing that I would like you to, or one of the things I would like you to get done. The next page, um, I'm not sure if this is the second or the last one that you have, because I had my girls, Yahida and Michelle, they were stapling for me, and I can't remember I told them to put the other one first. Either way, um, you should have the Math with Max, which we're going to hit up right now, and then the other one is just um, word problems that we're also going to work on. I'm not going to work on a bunch. I'm probably going to work on about four or five questions total on the whole thing, um, because the We've been doing adding and subtracting fractions for so many days now. It's been, I think, like six days. You guys got it down. Um, if not, you figured out what you did wrong when you were doing corrections. Uh, today's Thursday, so if it was yesterday, uh, you guys were fixing those mistakes. So use your journal. If you're still getting stuck on the adding and subtracting fractions, there's really no excuses anymore because we have been doing it so much. Um, I checked almost every single person's paper, and... Yeah, if it is a mistake, it's like a little mistake. You're you're forgetting to do this, you're forgetting to do that. So just get the journal out and don't make those mistakes anymore. Okay? All right, cool. Anyway, so I'm going to get started with the Math of Max. And I'm going to start with um, on the page uh, 3H. Uh, page, am I looking at the right one? Yeah, 3H page 2, and you'll see that right there. So I'm going to read it out loud, read it in your head do what you got to do. The only thing is I cannot read the name on here because I, you know, I'm just going to tear it off because I can do that. Um, what, do, okay, I've never read this name before. <laughs> it was not, it didn't even help that I tore it off. Um, Ming Mays. So that's how you say that name on number one on 3H page two. Ming Mays' brother is one and four tenths meters tall. Her sister is one and one fifth meters tall. In meters, what is the difference between their heights? So I chose this question because if you look at it, the fractions have a whole number in front of the uh, fraction itself. So I, wanted, I didn't want y'all to get confused on that. There is no difference in anything there. You're still subtracting. You still have to find your multiples. Um, you still have to follow your three steps. So if I have 1 and 4 tenths minus 1 and 5 tenths, multiples, change the fractions, and then solve. Nothing is changing here. The only difference now is that you have a whole number in front. But at this point, I don't think it's going to affect you so much. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So I went ahead and set it up like this so that I had some space. Um, I would like you guys to be working on the... Um, sorry, I'm all messed right here, guys. I'm like so sleepy. Pizza guy's going to get here soon. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So please be showing your work over here. Over here, I provided all this space for you for a reason, so please use the space provided over here to show your work. It's a lot easier for me to see if you did it or not. Otherwise, my eyes are going bloop, 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 and when you're grading 80-something papers, it just makes it way easier. Anyway, so show your work over here, which is what I'm doing right now. So I wrote the 1 and 4 tenths minus the 1 and 1 half. So again, I'm going to do my first step, which is do my multiples of my denominators. Again, your denominators are the numbers uh, at the bottom of your fraction, okay? So I'm going to go 10, actually I'm going to start with the 5, and the reason I'm going to start with the 5 is because usually it's easier to see it when you, you'll see the LCM easier when you do the uh, smaller of the two fractions first, of the denominator. So I'm going to start with 5, so I know I have 5, and then I hit up 10. So I'm stopping at 10 because if I notice over here, this fraction already has a 10 at the bottom, so 10 times 1 is 10. So right there, I know that my LCM has to be the 10 right there, okay? So the first fraction is already done. Because he has that 10, it stays at 1 and 4 tenths. So I'm going to leave that one there. Okay, so that one gets to stay the same over here. But this guy, he does need to change because he needs to become a 10. So I'm going to write uh, the 1 and 5, ten, 1 and 1 fifth, sorry. And I have to think to myself... 5 times what is going to give me 10? Well, we know 5 times 2 gives us 10, so I'm going to write 5 times 2. Okay, 5 times 2. So my um, 5 times 2 should give me 10 right there. That way We knew that's our LCM. And then uh, the 1 times 2 is going to be the numerator here. Okay. 
nothing is happening to that one hole except that it's going to stay in front of that two tenths over here. So, and also on this one, we know that this fraction is going to stay the same. So we don't have to change anything. It's going to still be one and four tenths. So just like that, it stays the same. Okay. So over here, when I go to solve, I'm going to go ahead and write the one and four tenths. And I am, I think the question said, uh-oh, Ms. Valdez, pay attention. What is the difference? So I do need to uh, subtract here. So 1 and 4 tenths minus, and then this 1 over here stays with this guy, so it's 1 and 2 tenths. So 1 and 2 tenths. Okay, so we have 1 and 4 tenths minus 1, oh, my bad. 1 and 4 tenths minus 1 and 2 tenths. That 1... Uh, nothing happened to it. We're only worried about the uh, fractions here, uh, the numerator there, and 4 minus 2 is going to give us 2. And again, we still have that 1 in the front for our solving of it, and then our denominator is going to stay the same. So we have 10. So our answer is 1 and 2 tenths, and I'm a liar, I guess. You know what, Ms. Valdez is not even thinking. Hello. The one minus one, duh, because one minus one is zero. Do you see how tired I am right now? I'm like literally, I forgot that one minus one is zero. Tired, tired, tired. One minus one is zero. I should have done this yesterday. I, I told myself, you need to do this today so that you can not be sleepy tomorrow. And I was like, no, I'll be fine after the fall festival. Totally lied to myself. Anyway, the ones do cancel each other out because I'm a silly goose. So 1 minus 1 is 0. So you're really only left with 2 tenths. But if you notice on your answer choices, there is no 2 tenths. So you have to think to yourself, are these both even? Is 2 even? Yes. Is 10 even? Yes. That means I have to simplify and make smaller. So 2 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2, right there, 2 divided, oh, 2, 2 divided by 2 should give me 1, and 10 divided by 2 should give me 5. So our final answer is 1 fifth. Can y'all even see that? My finger needs to get out of the way. So my bad. The ones here uh, do cancel out, so that should actually, that shouldn't even be there. Bloop, 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 bloop. I mean, you can do that. Get out of here. So we're left with the two tenths. So then two tenths needs to be simplified because two is even and so is 10, which means it can be simplified into a smaller fraction. And if they're both even, you can divide by two. So five tenths is the same as uh, one, I'm sorry, two tenths is the same as one fifth. Get it together, Ms. Valdez, for real, for real, okay? So that is the answer to number one on page two. Okay. Um, the other one I want to look at, I'm not really going to do anything, but I just want to discuss with you the bottom one on page two, which is the model here. So right here at the top, you have um, seven out of the eight that are shaded, and that is taking away one out of the two. So again, they are showing seven eighths minus one out of two, or seven eighths equals or minus one half, so just like that. That's what that first top model is showing on number four. And then underneath it, they have um, almost something identical. Um, if you'll notice that on the one half part right here, this bottom fraction is exactly the same thing, only there's uh, this half got broken up into more pieces. So this one half is the same thing as four out of eight. So basically they're saying like, one half is the same as this one. So if they had had the same denominator, uh, two would have turned into an eight in this case. So it's the same thing. So what is the final answer? Three out of eight. So when you pick your cho uh, answer choice here, you know that so far you have seven eighths minus one half, and then that's going to equal the uh, three eighths, just like that, okay? And I believe that is answer choice. Um, J. So on number four, page two, that is answer choice J. And you're going to see a few of those, so just be careful that you don't make a silly mistake and just choose like whichever one. Okay. Um, I'm turning to same math with Max, but question number 
uh, three because this is a com. It says the keyword in there is combined. It says Blake's sandwich. Hi Max. Am I hi Rocky? Blake's sandwich is four ninths of a foot long. Oh yeah. Megan's sandwich is half a foot long in feet. What is the combined length of their sandwiches? Um, so we know that we're adding the four ninths and the one half because of that word combined and combined equals addition, additione. Okay. So again, we're adding four ninths plus, hi Rocky. Okay. He is literally all over me. So I know that my first step is to do my multiples of nine and do my multiples of two. Again, I'm going to start with my twos first because I always want to start with my smaller denominator. I never really told y'all that, but, um, Sometimes it's, it makes it easier when you're trying to find out. You can't really tell what the uh, common denominator is going to be, but sometimes it makes it easier. Um, sometimes it just depends on who you are. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Okay, so I'm going to do my multiples of 2 first. So I know that I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. And then I know that there's 9 and 18. So my common denominator here is and 18 right there if I do my multiples correctly okay both of these fractions need to change they are not ready to be worked out yet because they don't have an 18 at the bottom so I'm gonna start with my four ninths or I'm gonna write my four ninths in my second step and I'm gonna write my one half Rocky stop he's like trying to buy my feet so rude okay and I know that my denominator needs to be an 18 so that's why I wrote that Already, that does not look like an 18. That looks like a 9, a weird 9. Okay, so here's my second step. So I have to think to myself, how do I turn a 9 into an 18? Well, that has to be times 2. Okay, so 9 times 2 is 18. That means that 4 times 2 is ocho. And then the same thing here. I know that 2 times 9 gives me 18. So then we have 1 times 9, and now they have the same denominator. Now I'm ready to work with them. We have 9 eighteenths and 8 eighteenths, so 8 eighteenths plus 9 eighteenths. We know our denominator has to be 18. My hands, I swear, they are just wherever they want to be. Um, 9 and 8, well, if I take 1 away from the 8 and give it to the 9, that's 10, so I'm left with 7, so 10 plus 7 is 17 over 18. And if I look carefully on this one, 17, 18 is our final answer, so that is answer choice A on number 3 right here. And then number 1 as well has that same model as um, the one on the other side. So here we have one half plus one third, and then you see they break it down. Oh, see Rocky. Hey, buddy. Oh, what you looking at? You interested in this math stuff? Oh, he's basically telling me that he wants to do it because he already knows. He's kind of tired of it, you know. He's sick and tired of adding and subtracting. I every day I come home and I quiz them on their multiples and stuff like that, and they get them right. And they're like, yeah, just yeah. We're done with math. Basically, he's telling me that he's over it already. So either way, one half plus one third becomes this the same as one half is the same as three six, as you can see right there. One third is the same as two six. So one third plus two six equals what? Five six. Okay. So if you look at your answer choices, I believe that is answer choice B. Okay. So just make sure that you choose carefully. Um, okay, I'm ready to move on to, actually give me like 10 seconds, I have to put the dogs outside, because they want to go outside, they just ate, so I'll put them out right now, just give me one, two, three, four, five, come on, Rock, come on, Rock, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm almost back, I'm almost back, go outside, go, 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 Okay, and we're probably going to be interrupted soon too again because my pizza's going to get here. I'm so excited. I'm going to eat it in front of you. So bad. It tastes so good. All right. Um, just a couple more. We're almost done here. 
the next one I want to talk about is uh, 17B. Um, let me see, make sure there's not a 17B on the other side. No, I do want to talk about 17B. So it's this one right here. I'll read it out loud to you. It says, uh, Mrs. Baez plans to save $732 a month for six months to pay for her summer vacation to Brazil. How much will Mrs. Baez save in six months? And actually, before we get started, I'm going to pause it and I'm going to insert a different video of something fun at the fall festival that I recorded. I think that you guys are going to think is super funny. So here you go. Well, hopefully that worked. Hopefully I'm able to answer it. If not, you know what, let me try this. All right, hopefully that worked. I'm not really sure. I'm still playing with all this technology stuff. So hopefully that worked. And you saw something funny that I thought was funny, so that's why I recorded it. Um, anyway, she thought it was funny, so I don't think she minds me showing you. Anyway, so back to 17B. It says, Mrs. Baez plans to save $730 a month for six months to pay for her summer vacation to Brazil. Brazil. Has anybody been to Brazil before? Not me. How much will Mrs. Baez save in six months? So reading that very carefully, it says that she is spending $730 a month. A, 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 a. You might think to yourself, A is not a keyword. In this case, it is because $730 a month is for one month. But they don't want to know for just one month. They want to know for six months. So if I'm going from one month to six months, my only possible operations, because I'm getting bigger, right? One to six is getting bigger. So my only possible operations are either addition or multiplication. Now, I can add 732 six times, but that seems like a lot of work. So I would much rather uh, multiply 736, uh, what is it? I mean, 732 six times that's just me i think it makes it quicker but you can add if you want to i choose to multiply so 732 times six obviously we already know looks like this so starting with six times two i don't need to do my turtle pizza head because i only have one digit at the bottom so six times two gives me 12 and i'm going to carry over that uno then i have the six times three plus the one so six times three should give you 18, plus one more is 19. And again, I wanna carry over that one. Now I'm left with seven times, uh, six times seven plus the one. So six times seven is the 42, plus one more, the 43. Okay, so that gives me a total of 4,392. That was 17B. Uh, the next one I want to look at is 18B. I'm going to do a couple more. 18B. So you look at 18B, it says Coke. Coke. 18B. A drink dispenser. I feel like there's somebody outside my door, but I can't tell. A drink dispenser holds 584 fluid ounces of liquid. If the dispenser is full, how many 8-ounce cups can be filled with the dispenser? So we have a total of 584, but they want to know how many just 8-ounce cups. So I'm going from 584 to 8. I'm going from a big number to a small number. So that we can either subtract 8 a bunch of times, or we can divide, which is the same thing. So we have 584 divided by eight. So my first step here is to decide, do I, first of all, do I see a decimal? No, so there's nothing to put up. Um, also, I need to do my multiples, because whenever I'm dividing, I have to do my multiples. So I'm gonna do my multiples of eight. So I have eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24, 32, 40, 48, uh, 56, 64. And I'm gonna stop there just for now. I may need more, I may not, who knows? So first of all, does eight fit into five? We know it doesn't. Okay. Next, I have to ask myself, does eight fit into 58? Looking at my multiples, yes it does. 
Um, if I go to 8 times 8, that's 64, so I want to use the 8 times the 7. And 8 times 7 is 56, so 58 minus the 56 is 2. You guys know that already, Freddy's. And I bring down that 4. And we know that 8 times 3 gives us 24, because look at my multiples over here. So 8 times 3 gives me 24. And so we're subtracting that 24. And I'm left with 0. I know I'm left with 0. Um, that means I'm 100% done in this case. Um, I know that's some basic division that we've done, but you know it doesn't hurt for us to go back and repeat it again just to make sure that we do it right the first time, okay? So let's just be careful with that. And that was 17B. Guys, on this page right here, and the front and the back, make sure that you are boxing in your answers or highlighting or circling or something. That way when we do grade it, somebody's not like, oh, I couldn't tell what their grade was. And I don't know. No. All right, so I'm going to turn to the back of that one. And the last one I want to do is the uh, 19A. And it says, a lit um, some weird names on this page, right? Blah. Alida, Alida, Alia, Aliida, I don't know. We call her Ollie. Mm. Ollie read 783 pages a day for eight days. She read 75 minutes a day. How many pages did she read in the eight days? The main question they're asking is how many pages did she read in the eight days, right? Pages. So what they threw in there was that 75 minutes. So clearly they threw in some extra information that does not matter to you. Um, but they want to know how many pages did she read in eight days. And so it says 783 pages a day. So that A again is a key word in this case because A represents one day. So one day, they want us to go from one day to eight days. So, so if she's reading this much for one day, how many is she reading in the eight days? So we know we have to multiply these two to get a total. Okay, so this is our final set, our setup right here. No turtle head, no pizza because we're only multiplying times the one digit. So we have 8 times 3. Carry the 2, right? Then we have the 8 times 8 plus the 2. 8 times 8 is 64 plus 2 more, uh, 66. So I'm going to carry over that 6. And then we're left with 8 times 7 is 56. Sorry, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. So just in case, uh, go ahead and use your fingers. Who cares, right? Um, so that's a total of 6,264. And if I made a mistake somewhere, guys, I mean, I'm like crazy, crazy tired. And I still have to pack my clothes and do my laundry. And it's already going to be almost 10 o'clock at night. I'm so sleeping. Um, anyway, I hope you guys had an awesome time at the Fall Festival if you did. Please behave yourself. This is going to turn this into the basket before you leave today. It is uh, just get as much done as you can. And I'll let you, I'll give you a little bit more time on Monday to finish. Um, and I'll do some small group on Monday as well. Guys, please do not take this essay, the uh, add a fractions uh, essay lightly. I'm going to bug you for it until I get it. Mom and dad, I've had so many parent conferences and mom and dad know that writing is expected of you from now on so and do a good job with your writing guys you know that all sentences should be capitalized have somebody read it before you turn it in because when you guys don't read it first it sounds and it sounds silly it makes you look silly and it makes people wonder like man does this kid even know how to write I know you know how to write I know you know how to read I know you know how to write so just be careful with what you turn in you don't want to turn in something sloppy and then people are like, oh, this kid, he never does his work right. Okay, that gets frustrating and I want to see the best out of you. I don't want to see the worst. So, like I said, just get it done right, please. Make sure it makes sense. Have an adult proofread it um, and just turn in your best work. Also, if you have not done your graduation hat, I want that on Monday, please. I still have about 20 of you guys that still have it out. And it needs to get turned in as soon as possible, ASAP. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Mm. We're going to start practicing for the Veterans Day celebration on Monday because that is happening on Friday, next Friday. And we need to be prepared for that. So maybe possibly during electives, I don't really know, not to be sure. Also, don't forget to take your Leader Me binder home 
uh, whatever class you're in, it needs to get signed. Hopefully you did a Leader in Me lesson this morning. And uh, yeah, so that needs to get done. Anyway, I hope y'all have a great weekend. I will try to record as much as I can, as much as I remember to do. Um, I'm getting better at remembering to record. Sometimes I forget or I leave my phone somewhere. I'm not, I forget. Anyway, whew, I'm talking a lot. I think this Coke went to my head. I hope you have a great weekend. I will do my best to have a great weekend and be ready and refreshed on Monday. <laughs> Monday. Okay, love you guys. Oh, that was too close. Mmm. What's for lunch today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love you guys.